Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today we're going to be continuing our journey with Microsoft Entra ID and automating it using Terraform. But before I do, I wanted to give a shout out to one of our new official Azure Terraformers, Mubarak Sheikh. Welcome. Thank you for your support. It really means a lot. Channel membership is a great way to support the channel. I'm a paying subscriber of Azure. I do this channel for fun to give back to the community and to help others learn about two of my favorite technologies, Azure and Terraform. So it really helps out when folks like Mubarak Sheikh support the channel in this way. Thank you so much. Anyways, I recently saw a talk by my friend Drake Lundstrom, who is also helping me co-organize the Columbus, Ohio Azure meetup, where he talked a lot about Copilot, ChatGPT, and other large language models when applied to application development. And although I have been looking for ways to work these tools into my channel, I thought this particular use case might be helpful. Large language models like ChatGPT are great. Most people think about large language models with their chat interface. But today I wanted to work with large language models in a different way. I wanted to be very specific about the prompt that I gave to my large language model, in this case, ChatGPT, about the format of the output that it produces. I want to use ChatGPT to produce a list of users that I'm going to bulk import into my Microsoft Entra ID tenant. So I'm gonna need a few fields, first name, last name, email address, display name, and I'm gonna need it in a structure that I can easily read into Terraform. So without further ado, let's get started. So here I am in ChatGPT, and I'm just gonna start writing my prompt um, to try and get it to produce a, a list of dynamically generated users. So I started off with, please produce, you gotta be polite to ChatGPT, it does so much for us. You know, it, it helps to be polite. Please produce a dynamic list of randomly generated users so that, I can, so that I can use for automated testing. It also helps to provide a context. It doesn't always use the context, but you know, it kind of helps contextualize and frame why you're asking this, this thing, because sometimes ChatGPT gets a little squirrely if it thinks you're doing bad things. So it's good that you're not trying to like get a list of real users or anything like that. Maybe unnecessary, maybe not. I want to load them into my Azure AD directory tenant. Again, there's a bit of a lag, so it may not even know what Entra ID is. As users to demonstrate how to bulk import users into Azure AD using Terraform. Now here it might get like a little bit misdirected by me mentioning Terraform. It, it might think that it wants me to write, it might think that I want it to produce some HCL to do this, and that's not what I want. So I have to be very specific. In order to do this, I need a list of users with the following fields, first name, last name, email address, and display name. I need you to output a JSON file with at least 10 such users. Let's see how this works. A few moments later. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I was expecting it to output the JSON file as like a code block, but apparently I can download the file now. That's pretty nice. Okay, let's look at what it generated for me. Beautiful. That looks uh, pretty awesome. Uh, although I needed to change the sample.org domain name, I don't want to have to write that myself. So that's great. It's always good to, you know, tell it, give it feedback like that, you know, it's meeting expectations. Perfect. Let's check this out. Oh, do we have it open over here? Okay, perfect. So I've got... I've got this list of users. This looks pretty good. So let's take this content and throw it into our project. Okay, wonderful. So I've got this list of users. So now I need to, now I want to go import or create users for all of these users. So if we remember back in episode 81, this is when I created um, Thomas Callahan III um, within my Azure Active Directory tenant or my Entra ID tenant. Um, but uh, now we're going to change this. So we'll just call this bulk user import. And we'll throw this in here. And I'm just gonna change this to be uh, rather generic here. Now the display name, that's interesting. So with Azure AD, I wonder, I wonder if we have like, 
first name. Is there like, is it a surname? No. So I think display name, we're probably just gonna have to build using the first and last name, which uh, it's, it's not the end of the world. But uh, first of all, let's load this local file here. Actually, I can just load this local content here. User list. And we'll call this uh, users.json. And this is a JSON file, JSON format. So I should just do JSON um, decode. There we go. So I got my user list here. Let's, uh, let's just output the user list to see what we got. And it looks like we are loading that file correctly. We have quite a few people on here, Logan Jones, Sophia Johnson, wonderful. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. So now let's introduce the bulk um, creation of these users. Of course, I am going to need to use um, the random password to generate a password for all these users. Now, the, the age old debate in the Terraform world is count over for each. Now in this case, I'm not gonna be managing this bulk import or this collection of users long-term using Terraform. So in this case, I feel like I can totally use count because I'm gonna insert these, it's because I'm gonna insert these users as a one-time operation. They're gonna be in Entra ID and Terraform's not gonna be updating them, or make changes to them long-term. That's, uh, that's all that I'm doing. So um, in this case, I feel like justified in using the count. And I can do that just by very easily using length uh, of the local user list. So um, this JSON encode is producing an array as we can see here by the squarely, uh, as we can see here by the curly bracket. Um, this is an array of objects, so it's not a map, okay? Um, maps, using maps and Using maps and for each is a great way to reduce churn when you're managing an environment long term with Terraform. But in this case, again, I'm, I'm just going to one shot this. So now I need to grab that count indexer and I need to go grab the email address. So I'm going to on my user list, I'm going to use the count.index and then I'm just going to access the email address attribute. And then for the display name, I'm gonna get a little tricky here because I'm gonna to have to do quite a lot of string interpolation. So we're gonna to need to go grab the first name and then we're gonna to have to go grab the last name. And the nickname, um, hmm, I guess I could take the first letter of the first name. And I'm pretty sure there's a substring function. I don't have it committed to memory. Let's check that out. So substring take the, str the string input, the offset zero and the length of one. So that's what we need to do. So we're just gonna go, I think I can just uh, actually, I will need to do string interpolation because I'm going to be concatenating these together. So substring, and we're going to take the first name. It's going to look a little hairy. Offset zero, length one. Okay. And it got rid of my string interpolation. I don't know if that was a copilot thing or if that was a format thing, it doesn't like that. And then I need to get the last name in here. And you know what? So the last name I got in there, I do need, I do need a string interpolation here. But the last thing that I wanna do is, um, I, you know, I could probably concat those together and that might be a little bit like cleaner than string interpolation. Let's just look at concat or I think maybe join. Yeah, join is what we want here. So if I just join these two together, 
I don't need any separator. Um, so maybe just join with an empty string would be better than string, like all this nasty string interpolation. Because string interpolation, I mean, it just, it adds a whole lot of syntax that really doesn't add a lot of value. So I'm pretty sure the separator is gonna be nothing. Okay, now the last thing that I wanna do is um, I wanna make all this lowercase. All right, so first initial of your first name, uh, concatenated by your last name, um, all in lowercase, that should get us what we want. And the random password is gonna be bulk, and we need to use the count.index um, for that as well. So this is, this is a little crazy that we got going on here, but you can see if I break this up, I got, um, I got join, and I'm joining these things together, and I don't, I don't know if this, I don't know if this makes it easier to read, you know, um, it does break it up so it's not all like jumble of consonants and vowels. Um, maybe, maybe this makes it easier to read. What do you think? Do you, do you like, uh, if you've got nested functions in HCL, do you like it on one line or do you like it kind of new lined out so you can see exactly what's happening? Let me know in the comments below. I'd, I'd like to know your feedback here. Me personally, um, I, I would prefer it kind of new lined out so I can see what's going on. Um, but it, this is a little bit hairy. Now, I, if, I were, if I were a good boy, I might, I might actually break these into local intermediate uh, variables, which I think, um, you know, which I think was a comment uh, previously. However, I can't really do that when I'm iterating across this user collection, right? Um, I would I would have to kind of do some pre-processing on this user list to create you know an additional field um, on each of those objects, which I which I could very easily do, but I just to, I I don't want to I don't want to introduce yet another step into this process. Um, so I'm kind of forced you know to not be able to use intermediate local variables in this situation. Um, so I'm just concatenating that that username the male nickname right here, okay? Um, so principal name, I, got, I already have his email address. Password, I've already got that all set up. So I think this should be in pretty good shape. Let's, let's, give, it a, let's give it a go, let's see what happens. So I did not include random. And what, what version of the random provider am I using? 3.6, 360? So it's not happy about this join. I think maybe the substring and the local should be separate. Let's look up this join. Oh, I see. The problem is join requires a list and I'm passing it in kind of like a parameter list. So I'm, I'm trying to use like a dynamic collection of uh, par function parameters, but that's not how this works. Now I can easily uh, solve this just by throwing this into kind of a hard coded array. Um, which will get this to work um, and then we'll be off to the races. So some functions do allow you to pass in n number of arguments and it treats that as kind of a params array. This is uh, possible in languages like C Sharp and I'm pretty sure Java, um, where if you use like the params keyword, you at the, the very last um, argument within a function, you can just keep adding you know, more and more and more. And all of those will be kind of automatically um, built into an array for you. You don't have to really do anything about it. Um, but that's not how the join function works in Terraform. All right, let's give this a go. And I've created a whole bunch of users. Let's go over to the Azure ID portal or the Entra ID Quack. portal. And let's go look at all these users. And there we go. So. I imported um, all of those users. Um, they all have nice uh, usernames and all that. So um, now I can I can go if I if I don't like what I just did, I can go destroy. Now I'm using local state because I'm going to want the idea is that I would one shot this into my tenant. 
Um, so you, you would assume that you would want these users in there. And if you don't want them in there, like they leave the company or something like that, whatever, then you're going to have a process, probably a human driven process or an automated process to offboard them to remove the, the user account and stuff like that. But here I'll just run Terraform destroy and clean up after myself. A few moments later. So there it is. So as you can see with the Azure AD tenant, you can easily automate either one shot deployments or long lived configurations of your Microsoft Entra ID tenant using Terraform. It's an extremely powerful provider and it's useful both for those that are focused on managing the identity management platform that is Microsoft Entra ID, as well as application developers that are building their own applications or building their own cloud infrastructure that need different identities, groups, role permissions created within the cloud platforms of their choice. So using Terraform, you can manage whatever your cloud platform is and your Microsoft Entra ID directory as well. There's a common quip where someone will say, if I'm only using one cloud, why should I use Terraform? Whether that's AWS or even Azure, I think one part of the answer to that is pointed out in this magnificent provider, the Azure AD provider and providers like it, identity management platforms, whether that's Entra ID or Okta or whatever, chances are your infrastructure and your application configuration is going to span a cloud platform and an identity management platform. And so leveraging a tool like Terraform allows you to very easily span that chasm between those two control planes. We're gonna keep automating Microsoft Entra ID here on this channel using the Azure AD provider. And we'll look at ways of using the Azure AD provider to both manage Microsoft Entra ID as a platform and different configuration scenarios that make sense to manage using Terraform in a stateful way, um, as well as you know utility ways like this where we just one shot config into Microsoft Entra ID and then we manage it manually. But then there's also going to be a bunch of scenarios where we're going to integrate Microsoft Entra ID configuration into our broader infrastructure as code solutions to enable our applications to more seamlessly configure Microsoft Entra ID. I see a lot of ARM and BICEP templates. If you ever look really closely at those, a lot of times they're paired with a bunch of bash scripts that go use the Azure CLI to go configure Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Entra ID. But with Terraform, we don't have to have a disjointed solution there. We can provision everything that we need with one Terraform apply. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We used ChatGPT in a very useful way to generate some test content. We demonstrated how we could use the Azure AD provider to bulk import users into Microsoft Entra ID in a non-stateful manner. Because again, we're not gonna be managing users in a, using Terraform state. And we talked a little bit about why even when working with one cloud, one of Terraform's superpowers of having this multi-provider extensibility model gives it the edge over proprietary solutions that only talk to one cloud. If you're enjoying this content, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot. And also consider channel membership and announcing to the world once and for all that you are an Azure Terraformer. Again, thanks to the new Azure Terraformer, Mubarak Sheikh, welcome, and let's continue Terraforming Azure together. That's it from me. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.